Good morning. Can you hear me? I have a new microphone. <laughs> you can't see it and I can't see it, so I can't tap it. Can you see it? Okay. All right. I can't. <laughs> um, announcements. Please, please note that we are I received today that the registrar says our exam day is Tuesday, December 13th, 1230 to 330, but we know we only take an hour, so we have 130, 1230 to 130 at the 100 Haas Pavilion, you know, the big pavilion. We fill the whole floor over there for our final exam. Any questions? No, fine. Then I have two names today. Johanna Garcia. Is Johanna here? Yes, there she is. Fine. And is that pronouncing correctly? I should do it Johanna. Yes, all right. And then Aaron Lee. Is Aaron Lee here? No, Aaron Lee. Is Daniel Hoisey here? Daniel Hoisey? Hmm. We'll try one more. It looks like Nicholas Brown. Is that, is Nicholas Brown here? Well, it's first time for this class I've had to do this when I don't have one here. What I do is I throw a piece of chalk and whatever fellow catches it gets to come. <laughs> And I will tell you, when I first started, I did this, and I didn't throw very well, and I nearly killed the person in the front row. <laughs> so look out. I just swing, and wherever it goes. But if a girl gets it, she has to give it to the next fellow. <laughs> it hit her. Is there a fellow in that area? <laughs> Another piece. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right, you've got it. So... All of you who I have not taken to lunch, uh, I apologize. I'd love to do it all, but we only get 30th semester, so that's pretty good to get that far. But what I'd like to say, a couple of us, we've had conflicts, and we haven't met when it was raining and pouring and things. So those who I called that we didn't go, would they please come up after lunch? There should be two or three of you, and then we'll make an arrangement. All right? So with that, let us start on the female reproductive system. And <laughs> all right. <laughs> and we look first at the basic constituents. First, we'll have two ovaries. The ovaries are the female gonads. And they're to house the maturing ova. Then we have two fallopian tubes, fallopian tubes. And they will transport the ova from ovary to uterus. You may see several names for the fallopian tubes. They're also called oviducts. Oviducts. They're called 
uterine tubes. Or what else? Just plain tubes. Sometimes women will be sterilized, so just having their tubes tied. So it's tubes. We'll come back to each of these in detail in a moment. And then we have the uterus, which will house the embryo, which matures into a fetus. and will nourish. The embryo and fetus. And from there we have one vagina. Which will receive the secretions from the uterus. and receives the penis during copulation. And will be pathway for the expelled fetus at birth. And then we have the vulva, which are the external genitalia of the female. External genitalia. of female. So let's go back and develop each of these. And the roll, roll, whoops, that doesn't come out. We're going to look at the ligaments that are associated with the female reproductive system to help us get the relationships of all of these structures. So we'll just say ligaments related to re reproductive system. So we need a lot of room, a full board. We'll start, put in our uterus, our fallopian tubes. ovary, So what have we put here? We have the fundus of the uterus, like we had the fundus of the stomach, the bulge, 
You have the body of the uterus and the neck or the cervix. This will be our fallopian tube. These finger-like projections are the fimbria of the tube. And this is our ovary. So now we're ready to put in our ligaments. Let's put in the first one, the ovarian ligament. The ovarian ligament attaches the ovary to the uterus. So you can figure out where it's going to be. Attaches ovary to uterus. Then our next ligament is called the mesosalpinx. Mesosalpinx. And it will attach, we'll see if we have enough colored chalks for these, the ovarian ligament to the fallopian tube. Attaches ovarian ligament to fallopian tube. And then we have the mesovarium. I don't know why we changed the names of these, but they do. So the mesovarium is attaching the ovary to the fallopian tube. Attaches ovary to fallopian. Now, the broad ligament is going to attach the uterus to the body wall. Broad ligament uterus to body wall. So let's do it white. It's going to just be coming out. It's broad. So number four, I'll give it there. Now we have one more ligament to go. Who knows that one? The round ligament, yes. I'm going to take this one off. Is that all right? So five will be the round ligament. And it will attach the uterus. 
I don't have any more colors. So I'm going to just have to make it in white again and take it down like this. I'll just give it a five. And it's attaching the uterus. to the labia majora of the female genitalia. We'll develop it later, so just for the moment, the major lip, labia majora, in female genitalia. So you say, well, this is all internal. This is all in the pelvis. External are the genitalia. How does this ligament get out? Does anybody remember? The inguinal canal. Good for you. We gave that when we were talking about the inguinal canal. So we'll put our inguinal canal in here. Inguinal canal. And we're just going to make an arrow as we'll see later where the labia will be the, to the labia majora. Does anybody remember what we called this opening? The deep inguinal ring. Remember we had the intestine going through for a hernia. And what did we call the external one? Superficial inguinal ring. Good. All right. This gives us our basic picture. Yes, please. The mesomet will come to that when we talk about the layers in the wall. But I'll wait because I want to build up to it. All right, thank you. All right, let's see, now we want, done our ligaments, we want just to go directly to the ovary. How big is the ovary? What is its shape? How big? Almond size. And shape. Everybody knows roughly what that, how big that is. And it consists of a connective tissue bed filled with follicles. Follicles with developing ova. So we we'll have this large bed of connective tissue. And you'll see follicles in different stages of development, some little tiny ones, but all of them developing around ova. These are follicles with ovum, singular, ova, plural, and they'll have Does anybody know at what time during your development were all of your ova 
in your ovary. Seventh month of the fetus has all the ova it's ever going to have. Where did we say those ova were formed? The yolk sac. They've had to migrate here to enter the ovary. They were formed in yolk sac, not in the ovary. Then migrate to the ovary. So by seven months, you have 400,000 ova in there. Say at birth, that's how many you have. But you're going to discharge them beginning somewhere around 10 years of age and stop discharging somewhere around 50 years of age. So ovulate between 10 and 50 years. And we do this plus or minus in today's world because it's varying with the health of the individual. And the hormone levels, all sorts of things. So that's just 40 years. How many months in a year? 12. So 480 ovulations in the whole reproductive period of the female. Isn't that amazing? How many sperm with one ejaculation? 200 million, one ejaculation. He can produce them through his whole lifetime. Ova are precious. <laughs> so <laughs> we have 480 ovulations. per reproductive period. But it is amazing, isn't it? All right. Be sure we stay on track. Now we want to show the developing follicle that's leading up to ovulation and which follicle is going to be the prima donna for the month and becomes primed for ovulation. So when we have our follicle, developing follicle, with our ova in side. And we'll grow and grow. And it will get a, we'll take it one more step here. So it gets larger, more follicular cells for nourishment. There'll be a connective tissue membrane that develops around the follicle. Obviously the connective tissue becomes modified in relationship to the follicles and will become what's called the theca internal, the interna theca, theca interna. And what's it going to produce? Estrogen. Well, 
what hormones act on the theca interna for it to change its chemistry and form estrogen, LH and FSH. So FSH and LH act on the theca interna to produce estrogen. So now this follicle continues to enlarge and will eventually form what's called a graphene follicle. It's the largest follicle at any one time in the ovary. Very large. It'll have follicular cells around the ovum. This is the largest. You see all these different stages of development. And this one now is our graphene follicle. And it will approach the surface of the ovary. This is fluid. Many th ideas or hypotheses on what is the final step for ovulation. But the, member, the follicles will dissolve here and leave room for the ovum to come out. It comes out with a rim of follicles around to keep nourishing it. And this process is called ovulation. It's probably a combination of the fluid increasing to weaken the wall and the area where it's got to come out from weakening as well. And so now ovulation has taken place and the ovum is going to go down the fallopian tube. Which leads us to the structure of the fallopian tube. We said that fallopian tube had fimbria, finger-like projections at its opening. So we had the tube coming here, and we have these finger-like projections. These are fimbria. Here's our ovary. At ovulation, these fimbria engorge with blood and essentially grasp the ovary. At ovulation, fimbria engorge with blood and grasp ovary. so that the ova can then get into the tube and go down. Don't you think that's rather rare? Why isn't it a continuous tube? When we study the male reproductive system, we're going to follow a s single modification of tubes from the testis all the way to the exterior. Here we have this. I can demonstrate it. <laughs> we always show our hands. This is uterus here. These are <laughs> fallopian tubes, and these are fimbria. Now I'm going to take this over here and make this an ovary attached to an ovarian ligament, right? So if I didn't have my hands full of chalk, I could show that these fimbria then are going to enlarge and grasp the ovary so ovulation can take place and the ova will go down the tube. All right. So now, how about our tube? How's it made? It's going to have simple columnar epithelium. With cilia. Has anybody ever seen a video of the cilia carrying the ovum down the tube? Have you ever been to the Midwest in a windstorm when the grain is waving? 
That's what this looks like. It's just beautiful. Those cilia are all beating to take that ovum down the tube. It takes about three to four days to go down the tube. And fertilization normally takes place in the tube. It's one of, again, one of these mysteries in tube. Because the, the sperm have to keep coming up, and they're going to have cilia and contractions of the smooth muscle helping them come this way when the ovum's coming this way. And what triggers for them, once fertilization takes place, for the cilia to be this way? Do you see what I'm saying? Fascinating process. All right, so we get fertilization in the tube. And then the fertilized ovum, fertilized ovum moves down to the uterus to embed and develop. Now, sometimes the fertilized ovum doesn't go down the tube. It embeds in the tube. So it's what we call a tubal pregnancy. A tubal pregnancy Fertilized ovum embeds in tube. Another example of a pregnancy that develops outside the tube is one that develops in the peritoneal cavity. Say somehow the ovum drops into the peritoneal cavity. So if we have a fertilized ovum in peritoneal cavity, what do we call that pregnancy? Ectopic pregnancy, yes. Ectopic pregnancy. Just to give an example, very quickly, a woman was in an automobile accident, extremely obese, didn't even know she was pregnant. But she had been killed in the automobile accident. They did an autopsy, and here's this fetus developing in her peritoneal cavity. And they got it quick enough so they could bring out the fetus. Can you imagine carrying one and not even knowing it? Oh, I have no idea. The story didn't cover it beyond that. No idea. They stop them usually. The pain is terrific if it's in the tube. They can chemically stop it. They also can surgically stop it. I sometimes worry about chemically stopping it because what other dividing cells are stopped as well. But it is an alternative. All right, so that gets us down our tube. We're down to our uterus. As you can see, you can have a whole course on any one of these. So we're down whoops, to the uterus. So when you're asked what is the largest mass of smooth muscle in the female body, what is it? Uterus. What's the largest mass of lymphoid tissue in the female body? Oh, wow. We've had that. This is the largest mass. What's the largest mass of lymphoid tissue in the male body? Right up here. What is it? Spleen. Don't you remember that one? 
about the spleen, we started with that, right? <laughs> it slips away from us, doesn't it? Largest mass of smooth muscle. In female body is our uterus. So now let's look at it. Usually say it's pear-shaped. We've put in parts of it. I'm not going to put the attachment of the tubes. This is just uterus. So the outer layer will be the parietal peritoneum. The outer layer. So if the outer layer is the parietal peritoneum, is the uterus retroperitoneal. Green, we have the parietal peritoneum. Sorry, but it is retroperitoneal. What other structures have we said recently are retroperitoneal? Kidney and what are the tubes coming out of the kidney? Ureter. The what? Ureters, right? The ureters. But here we've got this mass is retroperitoneal. Now, you asked about the myometrium. The myometrium is the main mass of smooth muscle that makes up the uterus. So in yellow, we've put in myometrium. Which is smooth muscle. forceful contractions to expel the fetus down through the cervix. And the innermost layer of the uterus is called what? Endometrium. So this is the endometrium. And the endometrium is going to consist of blood vessels, glands, connective tissue, blood, well, we'll put it in the blood vessels, epithelium. The epithelium will be simple columnar. And this brings us then to this ever-changing uterus with the monthly periods and the endometrium getting prepared for the fertilized ovum. And if not successful, then it will slough off each month. So we'll see if we can put in, begin from day zero to day 28 for a monthly period. Ovulation took place here at 14 days, halfway through. And we'll have our endometrium here. And the first day, first days of the cycle, since this is ovulation at 14 days, roughly five days, plus or minus, will be the period of menstrual flow.
so we're going to be losing our outer layers of our endometrium so we have our curve coming down like this our menstrual flow then will consist of secretions epithelium connective tissue blood all that whole layer will come off and then the end of flow five days plus or minus have the flow then we've got to build back up again because we've got an ova coming down the, the line and so that start to rebuild and this will be what's called the proliferative stage proliferative proliferative stage with glands and blood vessels getting ready to nourish so we'll put in little glands like this these equal glands and then we have blood vessels that are coiled at the bottom and straight coiled and straight we'll just put in a few these represent blood vessels and now let's say that the ovulation is taking place we want to get this layer prepared so we now have the secretory stage this is the secretory stage so the glands are going to get big filled with nutrients just put in a couple of those and we have the coiled arteries coming up giving the basic principles here and then if embedding doesn't take place then we have what's called the ischemic phase ischemic phase had all the hopes up and then the next will be the ischemic here where the I'll just write what's happening here the coiled arteries constrict and that deprives the endometrium of blood supply depriving endo I'm just going to write endo from blood supply so it weakens the tissue and then the coiled arteries open again and flood the tissue with blood and we're ready to start our new cycle and slough off new menstrual cycle but I think the timing of all that is amazing for these to coil and open weaken break and then we'll discharge outer endometrial lining now how much do you think the average flow is if you had to guess any ideas whoops I always like to see the women's reaction thirty five to forty five cc's is reportedly the average flow what do you think are you average above or below <laughs> ever thought about it 
in comparison. But every month, it varies tremendously with each individual. Now, what happens if... Just one more thing on this before we continue. Amenorrhea, have you heard of amenorrhea? What does amenorrhea mean? That's no menstrual period. I had one of my former students come back the other day. She's in medical school. She has not had her period for nine months. She felt it was just the stress of medical school. They did a MRI, functional MRI. They find some abnormal body in her pituitary that they're now watching. 22 years of age. So I thought it was important to bring this up. If you don't have your period for a couple of months, go immediately and find out what your body's up to. You don't wait. Lots of women athletes don't menstruate for a long time. So they have reasons. Let's see, we've got, we've got minutes for our slides, and I'd like to show them. This is a fetal ovary, which shows the follicles. You can see how rich it is in follicles. This is actually a seven-month fetal ovary a very rare slide that was developed at this university. In the next one, and this is later on with more of a stroma here. It has germinal epithelium here, but there are follicles forming, different kind of stain. Next one, here are the follicles again, lots of them in the connective tissue. Next one, here's one follicle beginning to develop, going to become a graphene follicle with the follicular collar around to feed the ovum as she goes down the fallopian tube. These nourish the developing ovum. In the next one, and here's the graphene follicle ready to erupt. In the next one, and this is, I didn't mention this, I'm sorry, but it's important. Once ovulation takes place, what do we call a structure that is left? The corpus luteum. So this is a collapsed follicle, the corpus luteum. And what's acting on the corpus luteum? LH to produce what? Progesterone, right. So progesterone is being formed from the corpus luteum, which is the remnant of the collapsed follicle. And if no pregnancy takes place, then it becomes a little scar. Otherwise, the corpus luteum of pregnancy fills the whole ovary almost as it's maintaining progesterone throughout the nine months. In the next one, and this is the phenomenal fallopian tube. Some cells are secretory to nourish the ovum, and some are just beating to get the ovum down the tube. In the next one, and this is the uterus, mass of smooth muscle. This is the endometrium. This is the lumen of the uterus. And out here, you would have the parietal peritoneum. This is just one slice over this massive smooth muscle organ. In the next one, and then this is the endometrium in its developing stages with glands. In the next one, then this is advanced glands in the secretory stage, waiting for to embed, to feed the embedded fertilized ovum in the next one. And then we'll get down to this. Where are we here? We're down to stratified squamous epithelium. What's this going to be? The vagina. It has to have stratified squamous epithelium now to prevent abrasion and prevent infection. So it's an entirely different system down here. This very thick stratified squamous epithelial cells. All right, that's it for now.